this is API Days Helsinki again, and we are starting a new track here with IoT and partnerships and ecosystems. And we have Hanna Silampa from Abloy talking about their story on ecosystems, APIs and partnerships and how that all came to be. But first, Hanna, did you have some kind of life hack that you wanted to share? Sure. Yeah, the best one for this uh, Corona times is to remember to make yourself presentable every <laughs> before you start work even though you would be able to do it in your jammies but it kind of makes things more clear when to start the working day yeah. it feels more like work so. exactly yeah <laughs> that that's a great feminine tip for us all remember <laughs> to do that and now you're set to go just go ahead Tan. thank you very much so let's share the screen there we go Ah, so, my name is Hanna Sillanpä. I am the head of digital and service solutions at Abloy, and we are the leading high-end security solution provider, both in electric locks, electric keys, and software solutions to manage those and share the accesses right into your mobile phone, actually. Uh, our journey starts in 1907. Uh, we've been here over 110 years, providing uncompromising security and high value design, but it all started with just one engineer doing an invention in 1907. Since then, we have been moving away from locking homes and providing padlocks, and uh, the first step was uh, the first Abloy electric lock in 1978 that was made for the Bank of Finland. In 1994, we merged with our main competitor, ASSA, and uh, formed the world's leading lock group, ASSA Abloy. Today, I have estimated 50,000 colleagues worldwide, so we're actually quite a big group. What Abloy is? Well, we are one of the ASSA Abloy's global brands that has a unique market position and we have also a globally known identity. Uh, we're known for our high, high security solutions in mechanical, electronic and mobile locking solutions. And the 60% of our turnover comes from international sales. But I am today here to talk to you about the ecosystems and, and how we do business. Today, we still do business quite a lot through these channels uh, that we have done for ages. Uh, we have very strong sales channels that you can see on the slide. Uh, majority of the sales come from business to business, but in Finland, we also do some uh, business to customer uh, via the authorized locksmiths and the hardware stores. However, we really, really look forward to the more ecosystem thinking where we see ourselves as access provider. Maybe the first step could be uh, the collaboration with uh, Verishore. Uh, that is a company that provides home security systems and we have provided them integration into our Yale Dorman locks. They are smart home locks that you can utilize, for example, with the mobile phone. And now with the very sure mobile app, it is possible also to up, uh, open up the Yale Dorman locks. So that is the first step. And in the future, we really see ourselves more in the position where we, of course, utilize the old sales channels. They are very important to us. However, also leverage new ones such as software companies. So they could be selling, uh, of course, the solutions that we provide via the APIs, but they, why wouldn't they also be, be providing uh, services on top of ours? Today, uh, we have plenty of APIs already existing. We see the APIs as essential part of our offering, both in current offering, but also in the future. Uh, there are APIs in the Click, Traka, and Abloy OS systems. 
And uh, most of them are actually integrated today with the HR systems, reporting systems, or then task management. So the APIs are actually uh, productized to serve those kinds of use cases. Let me give you a more kind of example of, of what uh, would be the utilization of our Click APIs today. Uh, if a customer has a task management system, they would be selecting an employee for a specific task. The uh, query would come through our APIs that this person uh, will be working in this location on that specific time. Uh, our system then converts it into access request and the access rights can be updated via mobile phone into our click key over the Bluetooth connection. We can also gather the uh, access trail from the key and the lock both via the Bluetooth back into the server and then we could provide uh, the customer's reporting uh, system data about the, the access trails, again, from, from the uh, server side. That's what is actually utilized quite a lot today already. Apply OS is an example of our access control platforms. It has flexible REST APIs and just exactly like Click, it can be integrated, especially with the HR, reporting and task management. Also, some kind of reservation systems are very popular uh, to be combined with the Abloy OS, but also integration with different building and security systems such as CCTV, fire and burglary detection and that, that sort of things. So kind of a mix between the classical system integrations and then the modern API kind of view. How the world is changing, how do we see things uh, when we talk to our customers and then see the trends and follow them? In business to business, uh, there is a huge shift to support the operational processes. So it's not basically just about the HR integrations anymore, but it's more like um, identity and access management kind of uh, ways that the customers are, are searching for. Uh, they are craving for flexible solutions so that they're able to uh, select the functionalities and features that give them most, most bang for the buck, so to say. So the platforms really need to be modular and the customer needs to be able to select what they want and, and what they uh, utilize from there. A very interesting thing on our field is that the doors and access points, they are very, very interesting data points. So uh, when we combine the information, we're able to provide very new kinds of experience, whether it's a, a customer in a shopping mall or a uh, employee going into an office. If, if we think about the latter, if, for example, we notice that an employee is accessing the front door of an office, it could trigger a series of actions. It could trigger the lighting to be set into uh, his or her preferred mode. Uh, it could change heating. It could notify the lifts so that the lifts are, are in the right uh, floors. And actually, why not even coffee machine? Wouldn't you like to go to a workplace where when you march in, there's freshly brewed coffee, just as you wish, waiting on the closest coffee machine. So that's actually quite interesting how, how the data from the access points and doors could uh, trigger quite many uh, actual uh, functionalities in, in the office space. 
Uh, then, of course, cybersecurity is, is one of the main things. Security is our field, and, and when we operate in the digital world, it really means cybersecurity. We need to have proper encryption in place, we need to be able to trust the identities, we need to control the access. So that is one of the biggest trends in the field. There's also another trend which might be interesting for all of us. So previously our field has separated quite heavily uh, the residential segment, so homes and houses and, and, and multi-residential buildings, and the commercial buildings such as well, uh, shopping malls or governmental buildings or museums or whatnot. But what we see is that these segments are really closing to each other and uh, that generates multiple different kinds of, of new possibilities. Also, the customer expectations, they are really changing quite a lot. And the advances in the technology give us new kinds of possibilities. The customers are actually expecting the 24-7 availability quite heavily. And uh, the mobiles, they are becoming more and more the center point of our lives. So we want to see everything and we want to use the mobile phone as perhaps as a key, perhaps as a wallet, perhaps as a bus ticket. That's kind of the center point of our life. So. We're working in, in bringing the segments together, providing the access to shared spaces so that it would be easier to uh, utilize the spaces not only for work situations, but also for off work. That would mean, could mean, for example, renting out the nearest uh, office space for evening for your personal, for example, hobby club. And uh, also the companies are interested in, in making their spaces more available so that they wouldn't sit uh, empty for half the day, but they would be utilized more. Uh, with the digital locking, we are able to share also the access securely, but easier to the homes. So that, that brings us possibilities in the uh, in-home services. Who wouldn't be frustrated in, in waiting the delivery guy at home or, or a maintenance man when you actually would need to be somewhere else? So ability to securely open your door for the uh, delivery and to be sure that the delivery has been made and the door has been locked, that provides huge possibilities. A lot is bubbling under in the in-home services and some of you might already have noticed that we've been doing some pilots in the area with, for example, Posti, Telia and S Group here in the, in, in the Finnish market. Also, our group has done uh, pilots, for example, in UK and uh, in Sweden. So we really are investigating this area and that is a fine example of the ecosystem thinking and platforms. Together we're able to provide these new kinds of solutions for the end customers that just being, for example, Abloy, we would not be able to. Um, the road has not been easy for us and we're not there where we want to be yet. We have had to change a lot. Uh, the change in our offering has meant a big change in, for example, ways of working. Uh, on the manufacturing side, we have been trusting in lean, but of course now the more agile thinking is, is also on the software side. And uh, we need to also uh, change the processes and ways of thinking in a manner like um, we have used to be maybe more technology driven house but now we definitely are a customer driven house 
So whenever we when when <laughs> whenever we do these new kinds of uh, solutions, we really like to do proof of concept. We really love to uh, co-design with our customers. We do a lot of usability studies and uh, customer understanding in order to provide the high-end user experience and not only the high-end technology. The roles have changed quite a lot. Uh, plenty of new roles have come up, such as head of <laughs> uh, digital and service solutions. And, uh, and, and what else? Uh, the business models, of course, they have had to change. Uh, we've been selling, well, if you think about padlocks, and now we're actually selling software. Uh, it's not just the business model, but something that we've really struggled is is actually the back office processes and the software systems so selling a padlock is quite easy you get the money once but now when you're talking about uh, software sales and api monetization and whatnot you need to be able to uh, analyze monitor the usage you need to be able to uh, subscription uh, price products, do dynamic pricing, uh, do actually the invoicing. And that is a huge task uh, that we actually decided to uh, generate a whole organis organization around that started, uh, well, basically end of last year. We've of course done it before as well, but now we notice that, that we need to take huge steps there. Uh, what else? Well, uh, of course the APIs themselves. So to be honest, some of our APIs are uh, the old kinds of, of SOAP services. But of course we also do have the, the modern REST APIs. Some of the documentation is still on PDF, but we're getting there, the, all the new stuff. It's uh, done with the redoc and you have all the modern kind of documentations with Swagger and available in a very easy to consume uh, way. So we're getting there, we're not there yet but we want to be able to have in a few years a really good API portal showing all the possibilities that can be uh, done with our APIs and provide all the support that is needed to utilize them. So what our direction is we are building, of course, more intelligent locks. That's the main business. <laughs> but as I said, we see our place in the ecosystem as the access sharing point. And uh, we really believe in the business ecosystem integration. We want to expand our ways of working and business and uh, we would really, really like to hear from you guys. So feel free to get in contact. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hanna. And it was a super interesting presentation. Uh, I mean, we met before, we've been ex-colleagues, and it has been so wonderful to kind of see where, where you went and what has been happening since. <laughs> and I especially love the coffee machine uh, thing because I did, I did uh, maybe write about that example in the API Economy 101 book because I have told the boss that wh why the heck he bought a coffee machine without an API. Who yeah. does that? I mean, seriously. So, um, but it's really interesting. I have a question kind of because you were talking about essentially about servitization and you were talking yeah. about uh, the kind of the same way as, as the Kone Finnish company uh, who used to sell elevators is now selling people flow and you used to sell locks and you're selling 
access uh, right now. So how do you see, like, who's, who's your customer nowadays? Has that changed? Or, like, are you still selling to the same customer personas, customer segments, the same stuff, and then there's just that API kind of thrown in <laughs> and those services? Or is, are there some new customers in here and in this group? Maybe the end customers have not changed that much. Yeah. And we have always wanted to uh, give good experience in, in, for example, all the Finns know the Abloy keys and locks and they just work. Everybody wants to have Abloy keys yeah. and locks because they know that they are working. So kind of the end customers, they have always been very uh, important to us. However, now, as the sales channels are changing from the direct uh, and, and from the locksmiths into more different kinds of software houses and actually even developers. So that's actually something that we need to consider more today. And uh, we already have been investing quite a lot into understanding the developer experience that is needed in our field yeah. so yeah, that, yeah that's exactly the the kind of point that we see that people uh, or co companies and the sales guys in those companies have to actually change a lot because they are used to selling to their favorite old existing customers and and the same stuff that they have kind of sold before but there is even the question of what is the what is the way <laughs> to pitch something like that especially if you have to suddenly go and sell it to new customers and and the developers as customer group or at least as an influencer group is, is another story and yes and that's that's good that, that, that really that. that really is a huge leap that these companies exactly like us that have been manufacturing something tangible mm. uh, so our Actually, uh, some of our old salesmen that have been selling those locks for years and years, they have been really struggling into how to sell and ask money from something that is not physical. Tangible. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. mean, you can't go with that bag of locks into that, you know, customer meeting and just exactly. You know, show. So now we have to. Yeah, <laughs> now we have to talk about more about the value, and we need to understand. Yeah customer processes more but then again the ability to integrate our our systems into the different customer systems such as the task management for example mm. it all also uh, provides us possibilities to get closer to the customers and and automate their processes yeah but that makes it kind of more of a consultancy or or yes. in in kind of in cahoots with consultancies in exactly. that way and that's a whole nother ball game. So yeah. good for you for going into that direction. But hey, <laughs> more challenges ahead. But isn't that yes. nice? Good. Thank you a lot. And see you in the live chat, I hope. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Bye. Bye.